Hi, my name is Ellie. My pronouns are she, her. In today's video, I want to talk about my experiences being raised in purity culture. If you've never heard of purity culture before, here is a definition from No Shame Movement. Within the conservative Christian context, purity culture is simply the view of any discussion of things of a sexual nature outside of the context of heterosexual marriage as taboo. Those within purity culture must adhere to a strict heteronormative lifestyle that forbids most physical contact with significant others, as well as engaging in self-pleasure or holding lustful thoughts about another person that is not a spouse. This view is generally enforced and policed by the family and church community. Purity culture includes an insistence on female modesty and responsibility to shield boys and men from sexual temptation. Many hold a strong fear of the spiritual consequences if they fail to meet these standards. This is the most thorough definition of purity culture I could find, and I appreciate how specific it gets in its description. But two important parts of purity culture that this definition leaves out is that it is also racist and transphobic. In the United States, the concept of purity was developed to support white supremacy, and it was directly tied to the harmful idea of the gender binary. And because of this, not all women and not all people in general experience purity culture in the same way. For me, being white and cisgender has given me privilege, even in a context that has harmed me deeply. I want to thank Juliani Gonzalez Nieves for this tweet last month, urging us white women who are talking about purity culture to acknowledge its racist roots and to listen to the specific experiences of black women, indigenous women, and women of color. She is advocating for an intersectional approach to learning and talking about purity culture, and I agree with this wholeheartedly. And so, of course, it's also important to listen to trans and non-binary folks as well. So I will be putting a list of resources in the description box of this video. Some of them talk about the racist and anti-LGBTQ nature of purity culture, and others highlight diverse stories and experiences with purity culture and I really hope you'll check them out when you get a chance. My experience with purity culture starts with no kissing till you're married. This is the phrase that my mom would yell every time we were watching a TV show or a movie and an unmarried couple would kiss on the screen. She would jump up in that moment and she would run to the TV and cover it up with both hands and say, no kissing till you're married, no kissing till you're married. We had the sort of relationship where it was almost like she was my priest and I was going to confessional. I would confess all my thoughts and feelings to my mom, not all of them, but a lot of them, because I felt like I had to. I had to tell her crushes as well. Most of these crushes were boys that I knew from soccer, homeschool group, church, and I did have crushes on girls too. I just didn't know that that's what that was. I haven't mentioned this on this channel yet, but I'm not straight, I identify as bisexual, and for me that means that I'm attracted to my own gender and other genders. I didn't figure that out until a couple of years ago, to be honest. I was 26 when I finally came out to myself. That's probably a topic for a whole other video, but I will just briefly say that purity culture had a lot to do with missing the signs of being bisexual. So, because she knew about most of these crushes on boys, she started to label me as boy crazy when I was about 10 or 11. And another label that I think fits into purity culture is hyper. So I was boy crazy and I was hyper, according to my mom. I guess just the excitement of being around other friends, acting goofy and silly, disappointed my mom. I get the sense that it made her feel embarrassed of me, and knowing now what I know about purity culture, that kind of behavior didn't fit into evangelical Christian white femininity. And it didn't help that I was a tomboy, so I loved running around with the boys playing soccer, climbing trees. I even remember my mom begging me to wear dresses 
to family functions and bribing me sometimes. And honestly, it all felt really wrong to me inside. I felt so much resistance towards all of these rules that I was being taught, but I would find a way to comply because I wanted to be accepted by my parents, by my mom, by my community, and ultimately by God. So I have a couple of my journals that I was gonna read a few entries from. This was June 2003 and I was 12. Oh, I feel like a fool writing this. I have to admit it that yes, mom was right and I was wrong about dating and boyfriends, but I won't admit it to mom. We were listening to Focus on the Family and it was talking about no dating and the new idea of courting. Now to me, courting still sounds like a female and a male bird flapping around, but it is the better method. Dating is not good because most men aren't ready to get married. They just like the feeling. They kiss you, tell you they love you, and then they dump you and do the same exact thing to another girl. Wow. Thank you, Focus on the Family and Dr. James Dobson for such an enlightening view. By the way, if anyone is confused on what Christian courtship is, I will put a separate section of resources in the description box so that you can learn all about that delightful subject. Okay, so this next one is in December of the same year. Let's check in and see how I'm doing with this whole purity culture thing. Sometimes I wish that God had never given us hearts at all. I get so angry and frustrated with myself. Tyler is a friend, not a boyfriend. Stupid Ellie, you need to stop thinking about him every second of your life. Stay focused on Jesus and on the right things. Pray, ask God to make you stop thinking about Tyler. Get all guys out of your heart and put Jesus in their place. Guard it, tattoo Jesus freak on your forehead if you have to. So you can see at this point, I was really internalizing what I was being taught and I was trying my best, trying so hard to live up to all these standards. And one thing that was really hard for me, I felt really alone. I felt like I was a freak, not a Jesus freak, just a plain old freak. Because the girls that I was friends with in my homeschool community didn't seem to be struggling with this like I was. And there were some girls that just seemed to have their shit together in the Christian sense. They just made it look so easy. So here's a journal entry talking about one of these girls that I felt like I should be more like. This was in October of 2004, so I was 13. Candace puts me to shame. I don't feel like a real person when I talk to her. I don't feel spiritual. I don't feel like I'm maturing at all. She's already talking about what college she's going to. She told me tonight that she's doing high school all in three years instead of four, because why do in four years what you can do in three? I was too ashamed to tell her that I want fun and friends before I go to college. And it seems like she's too grown up to think about silly things like boys. While for me, that's my biggest weakness. 90% of all of mom's and my arguments is about when I can court or kissing before I'm married. It seems like she wants me to rise above that. She wants me to be mature, like Candace. I have tried. I spend half of my whole day trying, but I can't. C-A-N-T. I think sometimes that I'm really close to God and we have a deep relationship and I feel kind of spiritual. And then I talk to Candace and it all crumbles. I really hated myself. I wish I could go back and just give my 12 and 13 year old self a hug and just say, there's nothing wrong with you. You're okay, kid. That's what I wish I could tell her. <laughs> and I guess in a way that's kind of what I'm doing by sharing all of these experiences with you. I am validating the feelings and experiences of my 12 and 13 year old self and to anyone who has either grown up in purity culture or is maybe dealing with some of that right now, I hope this is validating for you too. In my next video, I'm gonna talk about my purity culture experiences as an older teenager, so feel free to stick around for that. And in the meantime, fuck purity culture and everything it represents.
Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.